Jeez, no, my peeps. I'm God Rolls Dell, and this is the Perk Recombobulator. We all wanted it hard, and at long last it's finally here. But is the Perk Recombobulator everything we wanted it to be, or another hard nerfing from Epic? Well, let's dive in and figure out how we get it, what it does, and when we should use it. So let's do this. It's time to recombobulate, fam. How to get it. First things first, to unlock the recombobulator, uh, do you know what? I'm just going to call it the perk machine. So, to unlock the perk machine, you'll first need to complete Plankerton's Storm Shield Defense 2. If you've already done it, then you'll be good to go. You'll receive an initial 1200 reperk points in your resources and access to tutorial quests, which will gift you further perk machine resources. Alongside the tutorial quests, players can gather further perk machine resources through the event store, event quests, and as rewards in normal missions. These resources include Reperk, which is used to both change and upgrade perks, Perk Up, used specifically to upgrade perks, available in uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary guises depending on the level of perk you wish to upgrade, Fire Up, Amp Up, and Frost Up, used to change your weapon's element to either Fire, Nature, or Water, respectively. How it works. So once you've unlocked the perk machine and gathered some resources, what's next? Well, simply go to your armory, enter the schematics page, and go to your chosen weapons upgrade inspect menu. Then hit upgrade and modify perks. And boom, welcome to the perk machine fam. For legacy weapons, that is to say any weapons owned before the release of this patch, you'll need to convert them to the new system before you can roll their perks. Converting a weapon will have permanent and potentially detrimental effects, so be very careful before converting anything. You can preview the conversion before it happens, and you'll notice two things immediately. Firstly, an extra perk roll is available, so six in total for legendary weapons. But don't get too excited, since Epic have split out affliction damage from elemental damage, as we can see in this example. So if you're gunning for an elemental weapon with affliction, it's not going to help you. Secondly, some of your existing perks will have either been removed or changed. I would talk you through all of these changes, but to be honest, many of them seem to be somewhat sporadic. This can be said of a plethora of different perks. As such, you will need to carefully assess the preview for each weapon on an individual basis before making a decision. On the plus side though, any removed perks will leave an open slot for you to choose your desired perk, which will be granted free of charge, giving you the ability to potentially create some devastating combinations. However, it will limit your options you won't have access to every type of perk in a free slot. It will, however, always give you an elemental option if your weapon doesn't already have an element on it. Otherwise, it seems to be a bit of a lottery. A further point to note, for weapons which previously had innate elemental damage, these will particularly suffer if converted. Why? Well, innate elements are no more, so these will be split out into the perks. So for example, my Helium Shotgun, which has innate energy damage, loses two legendary damage perk rolls if split out, since a standard perk slot is required for energy damage and another for a unique effect, in this case, Affliction. But we'll talk about the unique effects in more detail in a minute. The good news though, all new weapons acquired will follow the new set of rules. As such, they won't need converting and you won't see any perk rolls disappear. Crit Chance versus Crit Rating. Critical Chance is no longer, for all new weapons, crit chance has been replaced with crit rating, which works as follows. 14% crit chance now equals 10 crit rating, 21% crit chance, 15 crit rating, 28% crit chance, 20 crit rating. All weapons have been given a flat 5% crit chance boost. So for example, the Freedom's Herald, which previously had a 5% and 8 crit chance, is now lifted to 10. So does this mean more crit chance for your weapons? Well, generally speaking, no. High crit chance weapons have really suffered. Why? Well, because crit perks work on a sliding scale now. The more crit chance perks you have, the less effective the crit chance buff is. So previously, if you had a weapon with 14 plus 21 plus 28% crit chance, it would have a boost of 63% crit chance plus hero perks and weapon based crit stats. Now, this would be replaced with 10 plus 15 plus 20 crit rating plus hero perks and weapon based stats but it doesn't convert like for like. 
Indeed, the more crit rating you have, the less effective it is. There is no official data from Epic at present, no surprises there, but initial inspection seems to suggest the crit chance halves for every 25 crit rate points. What this means for high crit rate builds, in a nutshell, is that they've all been nerfed, and they've been nerfed hard. And as such, if you currently hold high crit rate weapons, it's probably best not to convert them, as this would have a detrimental effect. Perk rolls and upgrades. So how do the perk rolls work? Are we finally able to create our perfect weapon, irrelevant of their base perks? Well, no, not quite. Indeed, it would appear a system has been created which follows the set of rules. Instead of picking any new perk you want, you'll be able to either upgrade your perk or change it for another perk in the same category. And there appears to be five categories. Damage, Auxiliary, Effect Specific Damage, Elemental, and Unique Effect. So for example, a crit or damage perk can either be converted into a crit damage or flat damage perk, or the existing perk can be upgraded. An Auxiliary perk, that is to say durability, reload speed, or stability, can be upgraded or again converted in the same category. I was expecting to see magazine size in this category too. Not sure if this is a glitch or if magazine size is a specific set of rules. Unfortunately, I have no data to test this out at the moment, but I think it's fair to assume this is a glitch. Effect specific damage perks, such as damage to afflicted targets, damage to slowed and snared, damage to stunned, staggered and knocked down, or the new damage to missed monsters and bosses perks are all interchangeable, or alternatively again, the existing perk can be leveled up. Elemental perks can now be converted into any other element or increased physical damage. Alternatively, the existing perk can be upgraded for more damage. Elemental perks also now no longer have affliction built in. Instead, affliction damage is split into the sixth perk for legendary weapons. If no affliction is present, a sixth random unique effect perk will be added as a sixth, such as affliction damage, snare effect, five headshots in a row cause increased damage, or headshot kills cause an explosion, etc, etc. Your sixth perk will always be one of these and cannot be changed. This is the only perk that will remain fixed on your weapon. A point to note though, this rule only applies to legendary weapons. As such, your epic and below won't follow the same system and guarantee an effect specific perk. Better perks available. So where we may have missed out in some areas, the good news is we've gained in others. The upper limit for all perks has been extended. That is to say, a previously legendary perk has been reduced to rare and as such can be upgraded twice from epic through to legendary. Although you won't be able to pick up weapons with perks beyond rare, or what was legendary, in the perk machine, you'll be able to upgrade your weapon and make it more powerful than ever possible before. So it's looking like with the right base perks on a gun, you can create something truly devastating to shove up a husk. Cost. But, and it is a big but, it doesn't look like it's cheap to either convert or upgrade perks. To put things in a perspective, to upgrade a common perk you'll need both 45 re-perk points and an additional 100 uncommon perk up points. And the higher the level of perk, uncommon, rare or epic, the higher the cost to upgrade in both re-perk points and perk up points. And to convert elements on a weapon, well, it's even more expensive. 1500 re-perk points are required for conversion, plus 1200 points worth of either frost, amp or fire up. Interestingly though, there is no additional cost beyond the reperk points for converting to energy or physical damage, making these the cheapest option, and arguably, for energy damage at least, the best. And collecting these points looks like it's going to be a bit of a grind. In the event quests menu, there are a few hundred on offer, but beyond these missions, you'll need to collect them as standard mission rewards, purchase them in the event store, or collect in game from either mini boss mission alerts or elemental storm mission alerts. So there we go fam, we've waited a long time for this, and in many respects, I think Epic have done a great job. They've created a customizable system which I hope will allow players to create very powerful and useful weapons, but not to the point they become so overpowered the game's no longer fun. But only time will tell. For me personally, it's had a negative effect on many of my weapons and builds, since they've largely been crit focused. But I'll just have to leave these weapons alone. See how they stack up in the new breed of customizable weapons. 
and make a decision further down the line whether I want to risk it and convert them or leave them alone. But a massive plus side to this patch update is the ability to upgrade the rarity of traps and weapons in the same manner as hero rarity upgrades, which of course means you no longer need to throw away that god roll shooter because it was only an epic. It also means you can now slot in elementals for otherwise limited shooters, including special event items such as the hacksaw. The possibilities are literally endless. The perk machine could literally make or break your schematic, but in any event, it's a great addition to the game, and I expect Epic, as ever, to make changes to the system as they go. But as an initial attempt, well done to you Epic, for giving players exactly what they asked for. But let me know what you think guys in the comments below. Is the perk machine a winner, or does it just suck balls? If you enjoyed the video, or found it even remotely useful, hit that like button. I'm not even joking this time, the amount of effort that goes into these videos. And uh, be sure to share the love and subscribe for more perk rolling madness. And until next time, GG, well played, and laters fam. Laters.